Thank you, Toby. Thank you very much for this uh, great intro, very detailed, uh, very comprehensive. So my name is um, Guillaume de Saint-Marc. I'm very happy to be here. Thanks for being here. Um, I, um, I work for uh, our CTO of engineering, Roland Accra. I'm based, um, based in Paris, most of my team. Uh, the team I run is in Europe, across Europe. Personally based in Paris, where uh, we have our Paris uh, Innovation and Research Lab. So as you probably picked up from the intro video, um, we're not just a typical um, CTO organization. We go really a bit beyond. And uh, our number one motivation is li in life is innovation. So we do not innovate uh, behind closed doors, just between, uh, amongst ourselves. We really love to innovate, uh, first of all, with the, the entire Cisco organization. That's part of our mandate. And uh, beyond Cisco, of course, our partners uh, and customers and the industry ecosystem. So in the next 30 minutes, uh, I'll do my best to uh, share with you as much uh, uh, of uh, what you've heard in the, in the rapid introduction. And, um, and hopefully, that will be um, really interesting for you guys. I'll be ready after the session if you want to talk about anything in particular. Sharing best practices in innovation is really part of the culture and is important. It's not like we know better, so want to hear from you as well. So a bit, bit more about ourselves. So who we are, primarily engineers, no surprise, software developers, some uh, biz dev folks as well. And um, we also are a bit more rotated than the rest of Cisco to what we call the senior tech talent. So our highest grade of engineers at Cisco Principal engineers, distinguished engineers, and Cisco fellows, we have a number of them in our organization. What is it that we do? Well, um, we actually work on a number of technologies ahead of the curve, uh, incubate these technologies, and when successful, you know, obviously, help to deliver and scale them via Cisco and, and our partners. Um, yeah, so all the cool stuff, all the buzzwords, the trendy stuff, we're looking at, but honestly, this is of little value to us until we really prove how useful it is. So we do not only follow the trends uh, or the buzzwords, AI, blockchain, all this cool stuff, but we actually work hard to see what's in it for us and for our community and for our industry in there. And so why is it that we do what we do? Um, so between us, we call these the big mountains. So what we are really passionate about is really trying to resolve Really difficult problem, big problem, big challenges, not just for Cisco, but honestly for the industry. And as you'll, as you'll see a bit later in my talk, sometimes beyond the industry, for the greater good of people, society, or the planet. We are not short of big challenge to solve. OK, so um, a few stats about the team. Um, 166 people, it fluctuates obviously. So small team at the scale of Cisco, but quite a big team for a city organization. 22 nationalities, we are across 14 countries. So the message here is <clears throat> we praise diversity, right? Different people, different culture. Um, I'm very humble with regard when it comes to innovation, that if you're looking for the perfect innovation process, which will succeed no matter what, well, good luck. <laughs> but <clears throat> what we do have is best practices, really good things which maximize the chance actually to have an innovation outcome. And diversity is really one of the great advice I can share, and I'm sure you guys know about this. Having a diverse set of people from different horizons, culture, with different backgrounds, looking at a problem, 360 degree, and try to crack the problem together, have much more chances to succeed than you know, working just with um, uh, you know, unif uh, the uniformity of people in a corner. Um, so a good way to summarize what we're trying to do in this team is we do discover what's possible, right? We do that for Cisco. We do that for, again, uh, our customers and partners. And if you look at this um, innovation wheel, you know, which is uh, the way Cisco actually do foster innovation and push the envelope, is a fairly classic, you know, build by partner, invest, co-develop. We're not the only corporate with this kind of approach. So our team is really involved with the build and the core develop, right? That's our day job. That's our, our bread and butter. Built ahead of the curve, you know, transition, work with uh, our business group to bring this to market. 
and co-develop with partners, customers, startup, and academia. But we're actually involved also you know, on the other side of, uh, uh, of innovation. And uh, it's frequent that we are also advising on a buy, partner, or, or invest situation. Let me pick up on an example. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm slightly biased to French example, given I'm based in Paris. Um, back in 2016, we engaged as part of our startup co-acceleration program with a startup called Centrio in Lyon, which is a nice city. And um, you know, leveraging a lot of the DevNet uh, APIs, uh, we, we proved you know, how Centrio could be a great uh, addition on top of our product. They do cyber security, IoT solutions for industrial environments. And from there, you know, three years down the road, last summer, we've acquired Centrio, just as an example how we actually uh, engage with all of, these, um, all of these activities. So the three things which I'd like to really spend time on today are the following. How we foster innovation, talk a bit more about tech and R&D. I won't be able to talk about everything, but I'll pick up on uh, what we are doing around 5G and, um, and, and wireless uh, technologies these days, and also how we uh, run a number of initiatives for the greater good. So, as I alluded to already, there is not one silver bullet for innovation. You know, there is not like one format which will give you everything. So really what we do is that we do many things in parallel. And that's the best way to really foster an innovation culture across the company. Um, intellectual property, you wouldn't be surprised to know that in our team we have a uh, you know, high uh, number of uh, patents per capita, uh, but also the open source strategy, very important. As you know, Cisco has always been, you know, heavily um, encouraging and relying on standards. And beyond standard these days, a lot of the, what used to be driven only by standards organization is also now driven by open source organization. So our entire Linux Foundation strategy work we are doing around technologies like FD.io, internally known as VPP, um, or even more recently around HIC. And these are good examples of how we are really um, fostering innovation and sharing with the rest of the industry via open source, which is a very powerful way to do it. Um, innovation challenge and hackathons, we do a lot of these. Again, um, a lot of time you know, in partnership with, uh, with the DevNet uh, folks. Um, Internal innovation challenge. So we have across Cisco an innovation called uh, Innovate Everywhere, which is really open to absolutely 100% of our employees. We've engaged uh, in the past four years more than 80% of them, more than um, close to 4,000 ideas submitted, 27 funded with strong sponsors and real funding to actually develop them. So, you know, it's one way to do it, but it's very important as a function in the company of the scale of Cisco to really give any employee an opportunity to come with, hey, I have a great idea, can you help me develop it? Or, you know, if it's not such a great idea, it doesn't matter, can you help me learn, you know, uh, how I can come more often with this kind of, um, uh, of, um, of, of, of ideas. Um, Co-innovation programs, that's obviously what we run in many places. Um, we engage, we have a number of innovation, co-innovation centers across the world. Uh, I'll pick up on a couple of examples, what we're doing with uh, folks at Port of Rotterdam a bit later, and in the um, techno-conservation domain. Um, but there is really a ton of uh, these examples. Uh, recently in UK, we've run a great program called Rural 5G, where we've worked with uh, a constellation of, uh, of partners, uh, academia, government agencies. So we do a lot of, of these, and startup co-acceleration I, I mentioned already. So last but not least, I want to talk about our uh, relationship with academia. So at Cisco, we do not have a large um, internal research lab, right? We're not like some of our peers in the industry, like Microsoft or IBM. But obviously, research is important to us. And so the way we do that is by collaborating directly with a number of universities across the world. And um, one example I want to, so you know, in the US, in Asia, in Europe, for instance, in London, we do a lot with UCL. Um, let me pick up on, um, on what we are doing in France with Ecole Polytechnique. So you see here, that was uh, last week, Roland Accra, second to the left, our new CTO. 
uh, my boss, um, you know, signing a new uh, academic um, MOU uh, engagement with, uh, with this great university for the next five years. It's been already five years of super successful collaboration, and we're going for, for five more years. And, you know, more than 30 internships um, in the lab in Paris, and sometimes, you know, uh, also in, in San Jose in California, 15 publication. We've organized four international symposiums, and, uh, you know, we have a number of doctorants, PhDs, Uh, coming out of, uh, jointly coming out of our lab. So we are extremely proud of this kind of collaboration, which goes well beyond, you know, just, you know, handing money to a university, wishing them good luck and asking just for a plaque somewhere in a room, right? So this is a great way for us to source the talent of tomorrow, make sure that whether they continue their career at Cisco or whether they join one of our partners or customers doesn't matter to us. We really need the best people to understand, you know, um, how Uh, sh how we need to shape um, the digital technologies of tomorrow. And this is exactly what we do with this kind of um, engagement. Okay, so um, let's talk a bit more about technology. So this is um, not exhaustive. This is a quick overview of a number of domains and a um, number of uh, programs we are running. You will not be surprised to see that um, IP connectivity at the scale of trillions of uh, endpoints connected, T-scale, that's what it is, is still a very vibrant domain for us. And we're not done with, you know, although some of these protocols have been invented more than 30 years ago, we are not done with what we can do with IP, IPv6, segment routing, and all these great things. Cloud native networking, super important. It goes well beyond just, you know, virtualized network function. This is how we can fully embrace the the beautiful model of full elasticity and horizontal scalability of um, uh, cloud-native networking. And we are very active here. I mentioned VPP, FD.io, open source project, and more. Cybersecurity, of course, cybersecurity is key. Um, it's um, really an arm race at the moment, including a lot of um, artificial intelligence getting involved into, uh, into cybersecurity. One of the topics I'm mentioning here is we're working on um, quantum-resistant encryption. And this is a bit of um, a cool topic. This is a bit of a back to the future. So, you know, in anticipation of potential future attacks um, from uh, quantum computing, when they will be here and really ready to, to kick in, to get, crack, to, to get cracking with these things. So we are already working on how we can make sure that today's communication will not be hacked in the future. Um, A lot of AI, of course, for networks and infrastructure, ranging from better telemetry, how can we supervise complex IT systems, but also um, a, a, with some application to, um, for instance, IoT and video analytics. I have um, a small example at the very back uh, end of this uh, presentation. And so what I'm going to focus a bit more on is the, the green part. Um, tremendous amount of uh, digitization going on across the industry. And <clears throat> one topic of interest is to discuss, I hope, for today is how does digital transformation actually impact your wireless and um, mobility strategy? So as you guess already, or as you know, obviously, the answer is a lot. <laughs> so if you haven't had the opportunity to download this, um, this great uh, report from uh, colleagues in, um, in the enterprise uh, business group, Cisco 2020 Global Networking Trend Reports. It's full of really good numbers, just a few here. They're all basically pointing at you know, the tremendous amount of need for more connectivity. You know, connectivity is the, is the um, foundation of any digitization which is happening across all uh, the different verticals of the industry, from healthcare to transportation, ports, um, manufacturing, and we need more and more connectivity. And obviously, wireless connectivity is the more pervasive and the more useful to rapid digitization. So what is at stake really here? You might have seen slides like this one, good marketing slides. And really, the fundamental approach of, uh, of Cisco on these topics is the following. We love all radio technologies. Wi-Fi 6, great. 5G, great. And guess what? 
We need both of them. Um, this is marketing slide. Without getting into much more technical slides, the laws of physics 3 shows how all these radios and frequencies are complementary. And tomorrow, if you want to address all the use case and all the need of the industry with optimal coverage and price point, you actually need to combine these, these guys, right? It's not one or the other. So this is great. Let's just combine them. Is it easy? What is the level of integration we need? Well, you know, the answer to this question is, you know, we need these really well integrated. Because what we don't want is have to deploy, as we do today, let's say a Wi-Fi 6 enterprise network, fully private network, and in parallel, embrace a 5G network, which would be completely different, siloed, managed with different tools, something which would require a lot of effort and investment for the enterprise. And this is important both for enterprise and service provider. 5G is known as the first cellular technology transition for the first time, which is going to be B2B first, not B2C. It's not the consumer driving 5G. It's the business, right? So this is great. At Cisco, we, you know, we love that. And we, you know, our mission now is to say, OK, so how can we make sure that enterprise can leverage 5G with the help of service providers, our partners and our technology, in a very seamless way? And this is important because, as you know, most of the frequencies worldwide are being allocated to service providers. So to answer this question, we've been looking at a number of technologies. Um, so let me point at a few very quickly. Private 5G, yes, for, for sure. We need to be able this private, need to be able this end-to-end, -end, you know, and fully automate and supervise these um, this private 5G networks. And we need to be able to do this really alongside um, the existing networks in the, in the enterprise. And there is a very nice property of 5G technology, which is called CUPS. Don't want to bore you with too many details. CUPS mean a control user plane separation, which is beautiful because we can leave the control plane with the service provider and we can integrate the, the user, the data plane, in the middle of the enterprise fabric in a super secure way alongside Wi-Fi and all the other uh, networks and technologies. So that's for private 5G. We're actively working on this. SP API exposure, very important. Once we have deployed this private 5G network, the last thing we want, as I said, is run this as a silo. So we need APIs from the cellular network to be able to hook up with all your regular, uh, usual uh, supervision and management tools. And um, the idea here, is, this is um, a product called UDC, Unified Domain Center, which will nicely integrate with tools like DNA Center to make sure that it's just yet another tab alongside your Wi-Fi network to actually completely configure or control a 5G network and make sure that you can immediately drag and drop and make all your policy users quality of uh, service demand flow from one to the other. Open Roaming Federation. Who noticed about Open Roaming at this event? Show of hands. Yeah, cool. Isn't it cool? So what is at stake with open roaming is very simple. If we want to be able to bring technologies like Wi-Fi and 5G cellular in a seamless way, you know, and make sure that enterprise can seamlessly take advantage of both technologies at the same time, we need to make them easy to use. Everyone noticed that cellular roaming is something which uh, the industry cracked decades ago. Wi-Fi roaming sometimes is still painful. Captive portal, oh, I'm not on the right network, this and that. So with open roaming, we've created an open um, identity federation with a number of partners in the industry to make sure that when you show up at events like this, simply by registering, we actually connect your enterprise identity, your normal you know, enterprise email uh, uh, identity with an identity which makes sense for um, for the wireless infrastructure here, and you're on immediately. No need to confirm anything. Maybe you just have to uh, you know, accept a certificate on your phone. And even we're working with a number of folks, including Samsung, uh, to make sure that this is even completely transparent in the future. So keep this in mind. Open Roaming Federation is going to be a critical technology because what's behind just better roaming with Wi-Fi 
is elevate any identity and credential management beyond the specificities of a given access network. You know, it's nice to have the SIM cards, but it prevents you from being known and, uh, you know, understand how we need to manage you. In an enterprise network, it's, a, it's an issue, and vice versa, right? So we're trying to elevate uh, with open roaming. <coughs> Mobile SD1 uh, is another really interesting technology. Um, you can go to um, Hall 5, where we have a space. You know, it's a bit of a private suite type of uh, area. And I recommend that you go and look at the demo if you're interested. Very simple. And let me show you this um, diagram. So I'm sorry, it's getting a bit complicated, you know, how these different technologies combine. But as we digitize the world across a number of vertical Everyone understands that the traditional enterprise perimeter is rapidly changing. And a lot of the enterprise assets are now, are now completely mobile, whether it's workforce or important equipment, uh, transportation, stuff which needs to remain connected to the, enterprise, um, to the enterprise perimeter. And so looking at how we can um, bring a number of agent technologies to the endpoint so that you have the optimal choice of, you know, I want this traffic to go directly to the internet, I want this traffic to go back to my SD1 and actually my corporate network, and I want this traffic because it's actually some fairly business critical services before you hit a number of cloud-based SaaS services go through my secure internet gateway, like Umbrella. This is exactly the kind of possibility we are working on. <clears throat> Make sure that it doesn't matter whether you're tomorrow physically into your enterprise perimeter or just you know, in a mobility situation. We want to bring you the optimal connectivity with the best level of security. It's part of uh, what the industry called SaaS type of solution these days, which are uh, um, emerging secure ac access uh, technologies at the edge. Um, and the last one is HICN. So HICN, I mentioned, technology we open sourced. Real quick, it's a new transport protocol. It's fully compatible with IP, obviously, but it's a new way to actually um, take advantage of such architecture. And the beauty of HICN is that it's multi-access. So if you, know, you have the possibility to leverage simultane simultaneously both 5G, Wi-Fi, or multiple cellular networks and multiple Wi-Fi networks at the same time, HICN will do that. HICN will also propagate content in an optimal way and make, you know, because it's anchorless in design, it actually handles all the application level use case of mobility extremely well. We're working on uh, currently on showing how this is going to potentially impact and improve WebEx, and uh, we're very excited about, uh, about this. So keep in mind that technologies like HICN uh, will, be, uh, will be very important for this type of, uh, of architectures. OK, so if you want to know more about this, it's really, really cool work. My friend and colleague, Sa colleague Sam Samuel, um, is uh, running a, a deep dive session on this, uh, I think, is, um, uh, is tomorrow, uh, and this will be uh, in all eight. So look for Sam, Sam Samuel. He's, uh, he's the expert on all this. And you see here how we, you know, I, I mentioned the importance of simplified operation. Not only, you know, you want to handle this from your usual DNA center, for instance, dashboards, but in terms of uh, checking um, uh, the system um, you know, uh, uh, service assurance, this is an example of how we are integrating all the technologies I mentioned into a simple uh, AppD dashboard, so very cool. Anyway, so a glimpse into um, you know, what might um, <clears throat> become available very soon as, um, as um, a new wave of, uh, of Cisco offers. OK, so I have a few more minutes just to conclude on Something which is really important for us, the fact that it's not just about the technology, it's not just about the business. We actually do innovate uh, for the greater good. And as I mentioned, for the greater good of people, society, or the planet. So you might think, well, you know, Guillaume, this is nice, but this is really just you know, corporate social responsibility. We understand you guys are doing this, but it's not a big deal. And in reality, what's really important to understand is CSR for us is not something we run aside. CSR is fully at the heart of Cisco's day-to-day -day activity. And most of the project that we actually undertake, we do that with this sort of conscious engineering mindset. Very simple. 
The internet is great. Can we use the internet for doing more than just buying more products online or watching more advertising? Can we solve bigger, more interesting problems? So the answer, hopefully, is yes. And when we, when we try to hire new talents, I can guarantee that it's very important to have strong sales here. So quick example, and I'll go really quick. Um, as you might have seen, Cisco and Port of Rotterdam are doing a lot of um, uh, co-innovation together uh, with a number of partners, IBM, Esri. And um, the guys at uh, Port of Rotterdam have a lot of industry transition and um, digitization challenge to resolve in order to make sure that tomorrow they run the port in an optimized way, including saving resources, transitioning out of the you know, traditional oil and petrol activities they had and stuff like this. Super interesting. It's probably as complex as anything can get. It's like a smart city on steroids. And we're working with these guys, not only on bringing a secure network, but how we can have all these different networks uh, mesh actually um, working together exactly as I've explained before. So all the 5G, Wi-Fi, wireless and mobility technologies, which I've explained before, we're actually um, you know, experimenting, experiment, experimenting with some of them uh, with, uh, in, in this great living lab. And again, remember open roaming. This is becoming a full identity federation in the future. Think about the amount of tenants, the amount of companies who need to operate in such a small, the port is big, but it's at the end you know, a small geography. Complexity is enormous. And so there is a ton happening here. One last example, um, techno conservation. So under the uh, leadership of Dave, David Ward at Cisco, we have done a ton of work in the techno conservation, especially uh, over the past 18 months where we've accelerated. We've incubated a full architecture. It's kind of an IoT uh, architecture on steroids. And the goal for us was not just to create business for Cisco, uh, but really to actually help accelerate the entire community. I mentioned Ecole Polytechnique. So we've used our academic relationship to, to organize a full symposium with the, um, the community of folks really trying to help with, um, uh, with the conservation of species. We've done a ton of work with partners like um, Entity Dimension Data in South Africa. Well, you can see uh, how we've been uh, developing some um, uh, advanced um, uh, video analytics AI to literally secure a digital perimeter and prevent poachers to get into, uh, into the perimeter of the reserve. But, um, but this goes really beyond just a couple of, uh, a couple of um, uh, experiments and, and pilots. Uh, we're extending to different countries, different species. Uh, we're looking also at how we can protect the ocean. Anyway, so just to give you a feel for where we are going with this, this kind of things. And again, you have no idea how this is important that what we do makes sense when we are talking with these uh, young talents from different universities and want to attract them to work with us. So that's it. We discover what's possible, you know, and hopefully the wider Cisco and you guys will make the most of it. Um, I hope the talk was interesting. Keep in mind, Sam is going to give you a deep dive on the 5G stuff, so check that. Um, we also, um, I'll be also tomorrow on the other theater uh, around 2 p.m telling you more about what we do with connected cars and autonomous vehicles. You know, I didn't mention that today. There was only 30 minutes. There will be more tomorrow for that. Thank you very much, and have a great Cisco Live.